Hello, I'm Matthew Kingpin. I mentioned in my Be The Entry upload that I wanted to make a long form video entirely on this topic, but today I'm going to be talking about Ego and how it relates to CS2 especially. It's going to be a bit of a lengthy discussion, so let's get to chatting, shall we? Before we start, this video is going to be more laid back in its presentation and production. It's a bit of a thought piece where I just wanted to talk heart to heart about something that's important to me that I don't think gets adequately touched upon when it comes to Counter-Strike discourse. So feel free to minimize the tab and just relax and listen while you play Deathmatch or something. Or conversely, you could always go for a small walk while you're absorbing my illustrious narration. The weather outside has been pretty pleasant for me lately. Maybe it has been for you too. Anyway, let's get into it. When it comes to CS2, Ego is not entirely omitted from the general discourse of the game, but this topic does tend to just sort of get a hand-wavy, just make sure you don't engage in it type of mention before it's not elaborated on any further. It's a very do as I say, not as I do type of problem in the Counter-Strike community. Ego is a term not unfamiliar to most mid to high level Counter-Strike 2 players, but to summarize, Ego in CS2 is the concept of having a set of expectations for yourself and others around you in relation to your own ability to perform certain tasks. In other words, it's the idea of this other player is better slash worse than I am, my teammates are better slash worse than I am. It's a very comparative mindset to have. Now Ego in and of itself isn't entirely a bad thing. Having standards for yourself and expectations about your own behavior can be a good thing, like if you're holding yourself to a standard level of engaging in positive team conduct or trying to improve an aspect of your skill set. Comparing yourself to someone you admire as a way to improve can be really positive for your growth. I want to become as good a crosshair placement as Nico. I want to be as deadly of an opera as Zaiwu. I want to bait just like Blame F one day. And then using that comparison as motivation to train and develop your skill can be really useful to help keep yourself going when the act of training becomes a tedious, daily, several hour long process for only minimal gains. As what always happens once you reach the upper echelon of skill level in Counter-Strike, or really any skill that can be learned honestly. Demo reviews, for example, both of your own games and of other players, are entirely predicated about watching how the player in the demo handles certain play scenarios in comparison to what you should be doing as a player in those situations. The positives of having expectations for yourself as a way to improve can be enormous. The issue that many players in CS suffer from, however, is when ego becomes a tool to tear others down and falsely bolster one's own sense of competence and importance. Now what do I mean by that previous statement? A lot of players, across every skill level even all the way up to the top of the CS2 food chain have a very uncharitable sense of self-worth when it comes to how they play and how others play. These players will say things like, I'm so much better than this other team, or my teammates are so worthless, or the tried and true, okay kid, when someone hits any kind of nice shot on them as if the other person isn't also a living, breathing, thinking human being, seemingly who has put as much time and dedication into the game as you have. Negative comparative behavior like that only serves to stunt one's growth as a player, because instead of focusing on what one can learn and improve on, the spotlight is constantly on what everyone around them is doing wrong. Spending time thinking about or making rude remarks about your team's performance or demeaning insults about the other team's level of competency only serves to waste your focus, a resource that people have in a lot shorter supply than most are self-aware of. Even if the opposing team is having a streak of lost rounds, constantly suffering crushing defeat after crushing defeat, half a dozen kills across the whole team five to six rounds in, there's nothing to be gained by calling them bad players. There's a lot more factors that go into Counter-Strike than just what a scoreboard might say. Maybe the enemy team isn't warmed up yet. Maybe they just aren't trying all that hard yet. Maybe they're a clutch-oriented type of team, which means they perform better under the pressure of a loss. That last point is especially true. It is actually a chemical process in the brain that we release adrenaline when we're under pressure. Adrenaline enhances our performance, whether it be in life or death scenarios or in video games. The greatest point you should fear when fighting anyone is right before you win the final round. A cornered fox is more dangerous than a jackal, to quote MGS1. All ego does is weaken your guard right at this crucial moment. That's why comebacks happen so frequently. Zonic's law is referred to as such for a reason. Start disrespecting an enemy team, start thinking that they can't shoot back, and that's sometimes all it takes for an 11-3, almost guaranteed win, to turn into an 11-13 heartbreaking loss. It's a compound effect too, because if you're sitting there and talking just a plethora of vile comments about the enemy team's play, and then you start losing to that team, what's that gonna do to your psyche? These kids on the other team are so trash. 
but I'm losing to them. So what does that make me? Worse than trash. You might not consciously know that's what's going on, but your subconscious thought processes know, your mood knows, your ability to perform is most definitely made aware. And because the enemy team presumably still wants to win the game, their own sense of ability actually increases when they start coming back as well. How many times have you yourself played against a particularly tough group of players that is absolutely demolishing you and your teammates, shutting you down everywhere you go and whatever you try to do? But after winning even a single round, you feel exceptionally good about scoring at all. And how that effect increases exponentially the more rounds you can rack up? The enemy team experiences that same feeling as well. Egos are mountains made out of glass. The second someone chips that glass and it all spectacularly shatters, all those shards end up fatally tearing you apart. And in CS, everyone in the game will be more than happy to take advantage of you, bleeding out in a pool of your own inflated sense of self-worth by walking over your dying body and snatching away the victory from you. A player with a self-centered ego won't always lose games, but it's definitely a lot easier to win against someone when they have a giant target on their back in the form of the glass mountain they're standing atop of, seemingly unaware of just how vulnerable they really are at any given time. Maybe everything I just finished describing is how you are as a player. Maybe you might even be mad at the idea that I'm suggesting something might be wrong with your mentality. It's okay, I understand. I have a big problem with ego myself. That's part of the reason I feel so qualified to have a take on this subject. I've yelled at my teammates, said some absolutely disgusting things to people who didn't do anything wrong to me, suffocated the life out of good friendships I've had with others I've met in the game, all in the pursuit of inflating my own ego. I'm not innocent of doing any of the things I just mentioned. So I can say from experience that this way of thinking about yourself and others around you in the game will absolutely stunt your ability to grow. Not to mention, it's just not very nice if you happen to care at all about that. Which, even if you don't, most people you queue with aren't exactly going to enjoy that type of behavior if you're bringing down the overall mood. There's potentially also a different type of person listening to this video right now. The kind who hasn't already angrily clicked off. The kind who might be slightly embarrassed at themselves after hearing what I've described. The kind who's interested in climbing down off of that glass mountain we call ego. If my words are at all reaching you, I'd like to offer some solutions that I've personally gained a lot out of to help correct having an egocentric mindset towards the game. Number 1. Replace every negative comment about the enemy team with a positive or at the very least a neutral comment. Instead of saying, wow kid, okay, when your opponent hits a nice shot or makes a risky play that works out, just say, damn, nice shot, I got outplayed, or something similar to that. If an enemy makes a bad play or fails spectacularly, don't equate that to their overall level of competency or intelligence. Equate that to, well, them just making a bad play, which happens to literally everyone. Just say, hey man, that's unfortunate. Or, damn, he gave me a really easy win, that's tragic. There's actually a really powerful opportunity that can come with having a comparison-centric mindset. If you change the comparisons to build up those around you and who you're playing against instead of tearing everyone down, not only does it help your mental, but it also makes you more inclined to perform better yourself. Those guys were really good, I wonder what I can learn from this match. As opposed to, wow, their team was terrible and we still lost, what are we doing, step terrorist? Everyone makes mistakes in Counter-Strike, and I do mean literally everyone. Just Google insert pro's name here fails and you'll find a minutes long video chock full of laugh out loud goofs for every single pro player who's ever existed, or at least the somewhat popular ones. So even if the team you're playing is getting completely annihilated, you're winning rounds with four to five players alive every time and they're not even making a dent, that doesn't automatically mean that the other team is a bad group of players. Sometimes things just aren't going a team's way. By calling a team that gets dumpstered like that trash or idiots or worse things that I'm not going to say out loud here, all you are doing is setting yourself up to think about yourself that way when a team comes along and decimates you, which absolutely will happen. It's just the nature of the game. You aren't going to win every match, and some of those losses will be humiliating losses. But if you treat every team with respect and positivity, Losses don't hurt nearly as bad, and wins feel a hell of a lot more fulfilling. Winning off of a negative ego is like consuming a bunch of junk food. It feels satisfying in the moment, but it absolutely hurts you in the long run. 
and you might develop pancreatitis, or in Counter-Strike terms, Silver Syndrome. Second thing you might want to try doing if you're having trouble not comparing yourself to others, try unbinding the scoreboard. Seriously, get that crap out of your face if you're constantly using it to hard check everyone around you. You might not even realize how often you're doing it, but continuously checking the scoreboard, looking to see how many frags a player has, and how high of a damage score you've attained is just making you play worse if all you're thinking about is, well at least I'm top fragging, or that guy has no kills, what a loser Lamau. Just unbind it if you're doing that. Something they teach you in the 12-step program at Alcoholics Anonymous, or AA, is that one of the biggest things that causes people to relapse is convenience. If you have alcohol in your fridge and you're an alcoholic, all it takes is muscle memory and walking 30 feet to your kitchen to break your sober streak. The same is true of CS2. If all you have to do is press one button to break your mentality, which you instinctively compress in less than a quarter of a second, it's not even somewhat out of the way, you're gonna give it a push and that's gonna upset you. Get the alcohol out of reach and make getting to the scoreboard if you absolutely have to read it a major inconvenience. If you're worried about not being able to see the economy, you could always just play with a friend and ask them how much money the team has, or you can even just open the buy menu at the start of the round to see your team's money. There are simple workarounds that don't require you to have that devilishly tempting scoreboard bound if that's a problem for you like it is for me at times. The third thing I'd recommend is to avoid playing with other people who have the same ego problem. It's exceedingly difficult to not have a negative comparison oriented mindset if you're playing with one or more people on your team that are constantly calling the other team a pack of imbeciles. It might hurt to essentially have to put one or more of your friends on IRL competitive cooldown, but if you're actually committed to improvement, it's going to have to happen if you want to actually build upon your skill set. Anyone who's actually a true homie won't judge you too harshly if you need time to yourself to fix a problem with your mentality. The last thing I'd advise you to do if you're serious about trying to change is to be patient with yourself when you inevitably fail from time to time. If you've been a very negative and comparative person your entire time on the game, or even in your entire time across all the competitive games you've played, stooping to insults and belittlement is just mental muscle memory. So be willing to take a step back when it happens and say to yourself, hey, I'm not that type of person anymore. I'm going to say something nice instead. You've got to unlearn those detrimental thought patterns before you can replace them with more positive growth oriented thought patterns. That process takes a lot of time and effort, but it is a possible goal to attain. So don't be upset with yourself if you slip up and call a dude a trash bag. Just acknowledge it and correct it, and you'll be well on your way to make a mental change in due time. With all that, we have arrived at the end of this video. If you've stuck through to the end and you're at all taking anything I've said into consideration, I am very much appreciative for that and happy for you. One of the chief contributors to the Counter-Strike community being so toxic is that a majority of the community thinks that they're entirely faultless in what they do, whether that be the plays they make or their personal conduct that they, well, conduct. You are only in control of yourself. The biggest ability to impact the game and your success in it is derived from your own play. You might be able to exert some modicum of control over other players through calls, or if you're a jerk, belittling comments, but you can only really outright change you yourself. So give yourself the best possible chance to succeed by having a mindset that lets you blossom and grow as a player instead of stubbornly clutching onto a toxic mentality that keeps you stagnating and wallowing in mediocrity. As always, please give me any and all feedback you have to give on this video and any other I've made. It is all read and appreciated deeply. I know this video was a little bit more low energy, a little bit more relaxed than the average one, but I just wanted to make a bit of a rant. Burn your dread, go into the future, and I'll meet you there. No. No, what? No way. Oh my <laughs> no god. No way. How? He ran right past no. you and you stomped. No way. Clip it!